hydrological uh, concepts hydrological pro uh, processes everything is same so that is the oldest uh, thing which we recorded even in the 4th century also we recorded this one so this ppt we have already seen uh, in the last class also just we will see what are the things available here next one so how do you measure that uh, particular type of uh, precipitation or the rainfall so it is you have a basic reference level from that particular reference level you are going to find out the depth of water so that depth is considered as the uh, the measured rainfall so how we are going to keep that vertical depth and what is the reference level we will see in the uh, next slide so usually it is in millimeters so the rainfall is usually calculated in millimeters so if if the amount of rainfall is very less you can easily tell it in millimeters but then the rainfall is more you have to note it as centimeter so when there is any uh, rainfall record which is telling in centimeter so you have to assume that the rainfall was very high at that particular time so these are some uh, classifications this we don't want to focus much on because uh, it's not available in your syllabus but then we'll just look at what is there so 1 mm is very very minute so if there is 1 mm per hour that is called as trace and if it is 2.5 it is called as light rain and so on this classification goes on so when there is 7. mm per hour more than 7.5 it is called as heavy rain so this is not much important to remember for you but i am highlighting uh, the limited amount of water and the heavy rain so that is what this statement says so when you have to remember only this more than 7.5 uh, mm per hour it is called as heavy rain right next one is the main thing that is the measurement equipment so what we are using this is rain gauge so we call it as rain gauge so there are a number of uh, different rain gauges are there so in our syllabus what we have is two different types two major classifications that is non recording rain gauges and the other one is recording rain gauges so what is non recording is nothing but uh, at in the ancient time or uh, at a time when there is no technological advancement so they created a simple technique to measure the rain so that is called non recording so manually this has to be done so this is a uh, most oldest part which is very tough also so this they maintained uh, non recording rain gauges at a uh, different locations not different locations during uh, so much of earlier period what they did is non recording rain, rain gauges only mostly they were used see another thing is recording rain gauges that is the most advanced part which you have lot of computing techniques is there so that is an equipment which is very costly and you can install anywhere so what it does is at a particular time it records and it sends the data so that is recording so most of the stations in india are using this recording except the hill stations they are using non recorded rain gauges so there are different names for this rain gauges hydrometer ombrometer and pulvimeter these are different names for this rain gauges then this is what i discussed about that's non recording type for the ordinary rain gauges and the recording type for automatic rain gauges so in this second one we have we do not have more amount of manual work to be done in this recording or automatic rain gauges it directly records the data it uh, directly uh, maintains that equipment and sends the data to the computer so this is how it is maintained so the maintenance and the installation uh, is very very tough for this recording type and automatic rain gauges for non recording type it's the oldest method in some of the hilly areas they are using this non recording type so the difficulty is we need to do everything manual in this non recording type right is this clear this uh, slide this slide is clear so this is what we saw in the last class so just an highlight about what is there in the measurement and how you are measuring this uh, particular type of uh, precipitation or rainfall or whatever it is now today in this class what we are going to see is only about the non recording why because if uh, actually we need to compare this non recording and recording type so when you read it together you will get confusion so this class i am going to teach about only this non recording type so next class we will see recording type after that we will compare both non recording and recording so you will easily understand what is the difference between the both so what is there in non recording rain gauges so usually we know that indian meteorological department so that is the prime weather station for us in india so that is the uh, government funded and government uh, institutionalized uh, institutionalized system we have so whatever the guidelines which is provided by the indian meteorological department that's what we are going to follow so earlier uh, when imd was established they kept some standard non recording rain gauges 
so that is in the name of simons gauge so this is the name of the non recording rain gauges which we are using in some hilly areas right now so this standard non recording rain gauges which is devised by this imd that name is called simons gauge that is what uh, that is the name of this non recording rain gauges so how it works right so this is the image is that image clear right now uh, just seeing the path by part i am just uh, breaking this uh, equipment into three different parts the first one is the top one sharp edge rim so i just take it out this is one part and the next one is this funnel so where it uh, the where the water is collected and uh, going into this uh, receiver so this is the second part and third one is the total receiver the water after collection it will go into this that the receiver third one and fourth one is the highlighted part in the outside that is the total body so now we are breaking this equipment into four parts first is sharp edge to rim second one is this funnel and third one is the receiver and fourth one is the total body part so how it works that we will see the actual uh, understanding of this rain gauge is nothing but the water which is coming on the top of the sharp edge to rim it will allow it will allow the water to pass on this tun, uh, funnel and then the water is collected into this receiver that is the uh, basic concept so what we will do is at a particular time we will remove this funnel and the sharp edge rim and we will take this receiver and there is one separate measurement uh, scale is there so we will pour the water into that separate uh, measurement scale and then we will measure the amount of rainfall which is uh, available on that particular day so that is the basic observation of how they are doing with the uh, rainfall measuring of rainfall so i have broken into four parts the, just now we discussed and how the water is getting collected inside and how we are Uh, receiving that water and what is the equipment it is used for measuring the drain for so in theory part i have provided that we will see one by one right so funnel with a sharp edge rim so that is what here i told this is the funnel where the top portion is a sharp edge rim so this measurement is like based on the availability of the imd this 127 mm diameter there are different uh, mm diameters which is available for the the non recording rain gauges but this is the nominal value for example if you take this funnel the top portion the diameter is 127 so there are some there are some funnels which are more than 127 so that is just a basic number so this is 127 mm diameter which is having here and then a cylindrical body so automatically this going this is going to be a cylindrical body and it's a narrow neck as you can see it's a narrow neck and then spliced base which is fixed in the ground so so this is what the total funnel part which is telling about here 127 diameter it can be anything and then the funnel which receives the water and it will it will the water will be collected into the receiver the first one so first one tells about the sharp edge to rim and the funnel right next one is the receiver should have a narrow neck so receiver should have a narrow neck here why why the reason is suppose if you are opening like this sharp edge to rim or the funnel what will happen is when the rainfall is coming at the same time if there is any evaporation or after the rainfall is over if there is any any evaporation if this is open too much the water will evaporate so we cannot find the exact amount of rainfall received so that's the reason this receiver is kept in the narrow neck right here so here also you can see in the funnel also at the end it will be narrow neck why because don't want to lose any water so the water will go inside this receiver also will have a narrow neck in order to uh, minimize the loss of this evaporation next one this splashing in and out what is that means is for example if the rainfall is falling into the sharp edge to rim and if this is very small one so what will happen is the rainfall which is falling onto this because of the open surface and the narrow uh, and the neck here what it will happen is the water will come here hit it back and it will go out that is called splashing in and splashing out so in order to do that this uh, rim is made deep enough see this rim and this funnel is made deep enough so that this steep which they are telling about is at least 45 degree uh, 45 degrees so this angle should be 45 degree in the funnel in order to uh, avoid this splashing in and out right this is the reason why this funnel is kept at this degree 45 degree in order to avoid this water splashing in and out and uh, why we need to keep this receiver receiver at the narrow neck is nothing but in order to avoid the losses in the evaporation so that those are the reasons why this dimension is kept like this right next one the same information i told the water will fall on this sharp edge rim 
and it will goes into the funnel and the water will be collected in the receiver so this is a basic one and uh, this measurement which uh, which we are telling is about the basic model which we have so the water will go into this this may be of any quantity like it may, it may contain 1 liter 2 liters so there are different capacity is available for this receiver so what happens when they use the uh, big quality, big uh, quantities the regions where uh, there is huge amount of rainfall at the time they will provide huge amount of this receiver and also the diameter will be more in the uh, funnel so that will be provided based on the uh, amount of rainfall which is falling on different locations right so now the water is collected into the receiver then what they will do is they use a different special measure glass so they will take out the funnel and they will take this receiver and the receiver the water will in the receiver will be poured into this measure glass and the capacity uh, that measure glass capacity will be 25 mm so what they will do is suppose here if the rainfall received is 50 mm they will pour into that uh, measure glass 25 mm once and then once it is over again the water will be poured into that uh, measure glass and they will calculate the rain uh, rain rainfall so this is the difficult part why because the measure glass is the uh, common thing which is kept so what we have to do is we have to take the water from here pour into the measure glass so this is a lot of manual work so this is the oldest form of rain gauges we used and still some uh, in some areas they are been they have been used so this is the process about non recording rain gauges right so this is the equipment we have non recording rain gauges since it is very manual and said since uh, a man should go each and every day to that particular location to take the water out from the receiver and then he has to measure in this measure glass so this is a very complicated procedure now uh, there are number of uh, things are there so now what happened this whole body this whole body that is sharp edge rim funnel receiver everything is fixed into a a concrete structure concrete foundation so that procedure also is there this is how this non recording rain gauges are fixed at a particular location so how do you select the location for that particular rain gauges is a different issue that we will see in later part we have it right now we is it clear what i told about is see how do you remember is nothing but you have non recording rain gauges non recording rain gauges is nothing but there will not be any automatic system will be there you you are the only person you have to do it manually so who designed this is imd so what is the name of that non recording rain gauge this is simons gauge right so uh, now we go into the picture remember the picture look out what all the things are available first thing is the whole body you can take it out first thing and in that whole body what is available the sharp edged rim and the next one is funnel and the next one is receiver just remember what are all the uses of this sharp edged rim what is the use of the funnel how the dimension is there and then what it collects and what the receiver will be there the dimension is a different matter dimensions we don't want to take much into consideration why because there are different dimensions there are different uh, measured uh, things are there so we don't want to remember the measurements of each of the things so what you want to do is you have to remember the four different parts of this particular non rain uh, non recording rain gauges so after this water is collected into this uh, receiver you have to take this receiver and you have to use a special measure glass where you will measure the capacity of that particular rain water received so every 25 mm the water is filled in the measure glass then again you have to pour it out and then you have to use this water from the receiver and measure it so this is a very big process this is about non recording rain gauges right